Okay, in this example, we're told we have air flowing isentropically through a converging nozzle. Let me sketch that out. We have a converging nozzle like this. At a section where the nozzle area is uh, 0.013 square feet, the local pressure, temperature, and Mach number are given. So we're given some particular location here. Let's just let's call it right there. We're given the area, the pressure, temperature, and Mach number. And then we're also told that the back pressure, so the pressure out here, is uh, 30 PSIA. So we're given all this information, and, and we're asked to determine the Mach number at the throat, the mass flow rate, and the throat area. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is check to see whether or not this flow is choked. So we want to just know if the Mach number right at the exit here is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and check that. And if, if, if the flow is in fact choked, then the Mach number there at that throat will be equal to 1. If it's not choked, then it'll be a subsonic value. And if it's, if it's not choked and the, the Mach number is subsonic, then the exit pressure will equal the back pressure. So let's go ahead and just check to see what the, what the um, pressure ratio is right at the exit. So what I want to do is check to find what PB over P0 is. I want to see what that is. And I want to see whether or not that value is, so I'm, I'm going to put another question mark here. I want to see if it's less than or equal to the P star over P0 value. This would be if the Mach number is equal to 1 there. And for air, that ratio comes out to be just over a half, so 0.5283. Remember that that's just equal to 1 plus k minus 1 over 2 raised to the k 1 minus k. That, that comes from a derivation we did in the lecture. So in order to find this ratio, I need to find the stagnation pressure first of all. And I can do that from the information given at this location. I'm given the, um, I'm given the Mach number and the pressure at that location. So I can find the, the stagnation pressure. So let me write that out. So here's our stagnation pressure ratio expression. I'm given the information that the pressure uh, is 60 PSIA, where the Mach number is equal to 0.52. We know the specific heat ratio for air, uh, for air is 1.4. So we can solve for the stagnation pressure. That stagnation pressure comes out to be 72.15 PSIA. Now that I have that stagnation pressure, and by the way, the stagnation pressure will will remain constant. There's no shock wave or anything occurring in this converging section. It's, it's all subsonic here. So we don't have any non-isentropic processes, so that means our stagnation pressure will remain a constant. So I can take the ratio of the back pressure, the 30 PSIA, to the stagnation pressure. That's this thing here, so let me go ahead and do that. Stagnation pressure was 72.15 PSIA. The back pressure is 30 PSIA. And when you evaluate that, that comes out to be equal to, I'll just put it over here, 0.4158. So in fact, our back pressure ratio, back pressure to stagnation pressure ratio is less than the P star over P naught, which means then that our flow is choked. Since the flow is choked, it means that the Mach number at that throat has to be equal to 1. So that's uh, one of the questions we were asked, is what is the Mach number at the throat? And since the flow is in fact choked, the Mach number at the throat has to equal 1. The next question is, what is the mass flow rate? So to find the mass flow rate, we can do it uh, different ways, but uh, we'll just use the choked flow mass flow rate expression. So the mass flow rate will be the choked flow mass flow rate. And we derive this in one of the lectures. I'll just give you the expression here. It's given on the formula sheet. It's probably easiest to just to look it up. It's kind of a long expression to memorize. But here is the choked flow, mass flow rate. We know the specific heat ratio K, the stagnation pressure we just calculated moments ago. We still need to find what the stagnation temperature is, so that we're going to have to figure out. We also need to figure out what the sonic area is. Um, now, to find the, let's go ahead and first find the stagnation temperature. Let's do that first. 
So to find the stagnation temperature, we can use our stagnation temperature ratio expression. Again, this was something we derived in lecture. So we have that expression. And again, we know the Mach number is 0.52. We know that static temperature, where that Mach number is given, that was given up here in the expression at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, be careful. We have to convert from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees ranking because we need an absolute temperature. So the temperature there would be, when you convert over to uh, degrees ranking, it comes out to be um, 500 degrees ranking. Okay, so then we can plug those values back in and find the stagnation temperature. That comes out to be 527 degrees ranking. So we can plug that in up there. And then now we have to find the sonic area. And that we'll get from our sonic area ratio. Looks like the following. Again, this is one we derived in the lecture. It's, it's on the formula sheet. It's probably easiest just to look it up on the formula sheet because it's kind of a longer expression. And uh, this is going to be raised to a power. This is k plus 1 all over 2 k minus 1. And here we know the area where the Mach number is given. So the Mach number is 0.52. By the way, that's a Mach number squared. And then the area at that Mach number we were given as 0 0.013 square feet. 0 0.013 square feet. And so from this we can solve for the sonic area. This, by the way, will be the same area as the area of the throat because we know the Mach number there is, e is equal to 1. So when you work out this value, it comes out to be 9.97 times 10 to the minus 3 square feet. And I think, by the way, that was one of the questions we were asked to, to solve for. Yeah, what's, what's the throat area? Well, we just derive that here. It's the same as the sonic area because the Mach number is 1 there. Now that we have that sonic area, we can plug that back into our mass flow rate expression, work out all the numbers, and when you do that, the mass flow rate comes out to be 2.40 pounds mass per second. There's some unit conversions that need to happen there, but uh, I'm sure you can figure those out on your own. Now the last thing that I want to do, we weren't asked specifically to do this, but I'll do it anyway, is to uh, sketch out a TS diagram. TS diagrams are just handy for visualizing what's happening in a flow. Here's the stagnation temperature and the stagnation pressure. And uh, we're starting for some uh, case where it's not at stagnation conditions. The temperatures, the static temperature is lower than the stagnation temperature. Same with the static pressure. So we're starting at these conditions. Everything is isentropic. There are no shock waves in here, for example. So, so we're starting here at uh, where the temperature is uh, 500 degrees ranking and the pressure we were given as being uh, 600, uh, I'm sorry, 60 PSIA. And then we go to the throat, which is at sonic conditions. So here's our throat conditions, which is just uh, starred conditions because it's the sonic, uh, it's the Mach number is one there. So we have T star at the throat. And the pressure there is P star. And we get there isentropically, so we go vertically. So it's a pretty straightforward TS diagram. It's all vertical because it's isentropic. We never did, you know, we in our particular example, we didn't start at stagnation conditions, but it's always good to show those references on your TS diagram. Instead, we started somewhere at a, a different Mach, a Mach number of 0.52, so our pressure and temperature are, are lower than what you have for stagnation conditions. So anyway, that's the TS diagram. We'll go ahead and end the example there.